Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have Nico Jungle Silver versus Zach Jungle Silver. Let's see what happens in this particular game because we have a Rel, we have a Yasuo, we have all the Edge Lords, the Vayne that you could want in a Silver MMR game. Of course the Vagar as well doing his Leprechaun things. The solo start from the Zach here on his uh, uh, Raptors with the Q, fascinating. And then Nico doing the Raptor solo as well. Now when most junglers do solo starts, you typically always default to saying, okay, well, they started Raptors, right? They're going to path to the edge of their quadrant and gank the side lane. Yes. Who could have foreseen this? No one. Now, obviously, the server's a little late to lane, which means this will shove in nicely. They won't have a level two, though. So Zach will have to adjust with this knowledge, uh, you know. You'll have to adjust with this knowledge. I have to let you know that you can get the jungle video courses on Vukai.gg for a 95% discount with the new membership program. Get access to the courses you need to achieve your goals by the end of Split 1 and for all of Split 2. Not only that, I'm also including a private Discord with this so that you can come and join me, get access to free coaching, free champion for graphics, weekly lectures and Q&As, as well as a free video every week only released within the Vukai.gg Jungle Club Discord. If you want to buy the courses standalone, you of course can still do that, along with a free jungle improvement PDF, the video courses, plus full access to the Discord, Rukaido GG is even more a jungler's loading paradise. Click the link below to climb faster than Warwick chasing a 1 HP Jinx across the map. Now, the thing is, if you know how to clear, I'm not gonna rehash every silver video, hey guys, this clear is terrible. You know it's terrible, you know you need to improve your clears, so what do you do? You go to League of Graphs, you look up all the Challenger, Master Plus, Grandmaster, whatever best plays on your champion, you download the replay and you copy them, you emulate them, you make it as good as possible, just so, right? Just so, <laughs> as we watch this year, you can make sure you're coming out of your clears efficiently and successfully. Now, as always, just a very quick little tidbit. When you're against the Nico, obviously, if you see a, uh, hmm, okay, three, one, four bonus minions, all right, cool, great for me. No, it's a Nico. If you're a little bit confused about where the Nico is, and you think she might be a minion, press tab. You press tab, she's not gonna be a question mark, right? Once she's in vision. Obviously now she's not in vision, but you'll see here once her minion shows up, uh, does it work? I oh, know, there we go, here we go, here we go, there we go. See, now her icon is no longer question marked because she, we know she's in vision. So if you're doing this as a laner, as a Zac, and around 335, you're like, hmm, did she go leashless raptors into the side lane gang? Press tab. Firstly, you should recognize it because she did a terrible job of sticking to the wave, movement speed, yada yada. But also, if you just pressed it, you'd see it. So, yeah, we, at least it'd be kind of obvious because once you press it and you see that that question mark is going to weigh, you can quickly F key or look around as the jungler and say, right, where are there extra minions or Krug showing up? And that's the importance of having to look around. Now, it's not going to be easy to do, but that's what you have to do against a Nico. Secondly, as she does go for this gank, let's see if it works. Watch the minion. You see it. I see it. It's chugging some HP potions. We miss the root which means we don't get the kill. If we hit the skill shot, we most likely get the kill there. We missed it, we showed ourselves, we gave it away. Zack now knows this and is now waiting for Sivir to go for this gank. If bottom lane didn't leave toward it, means it should be a freebie. But again, Sivir will be level one. Did the bottom lane use any uh, enough sums for us to actually go in here? Skill shot misses, right? We're gonna keep trying to hit the rel here. Next wave is coming, we're gonna be tanking it. Sivir's gonna flash in here, level one. We're getting condemned away. Can we kill the Rel? Can we kill the Rel? What a beautiful stuff. We do get the kill from the Xerath, but that was beautiful by Rel. Held, out, held every spell perfectly, but still dies. That's okay. We burnt all their sums. Now, Nico, at this stage, if you're Zach, you've got to recognize it. Okay, Nico went topside. I saw it. 12 CS, red buff. Leashless Raptors, red Krugs. Once she's done top lane and finished, you know, doing her stuff here, she's going to come to this side. So here now, you know the Nico is going to show up. Now, if you're an aggressive jungler and you know the bottom lane is dead and Vayne has to reset, yeah, she's coming back with some more cash money. I would try and, I would try and get pressure here. Push him off, get a kill. Who knows? Because at 318, right, against a Silver Cane, a Silver Fiddle, Silver Lydia, any Silver jungler that started topside is full clearing down. At 318, if you're a Kindred Rengar Shaco and you do this into this, you can still invade this and most likely kill them because they will be low. So use this knowledge to try and get a little bit more aggressive, but strategically so, not, not randomly, right? Secondly, if that was one big ass point, <laughs> you don't have to start solo raptors if you want to do a solo start. It's something I was talking about in the Vukayu Jungle Discord, the private one through memberships. Just today with someone, he was talking about Lee Sinclair. I said, hey, just start wolves, man. And then you can go Grump, you can go Blue, and you can get top lane if it's a carry top lane. And he looked up a Chinese one trick, he was doing exactly that strategy. He relayed that information to everybody saying, look, I scouted this, I saw this. 
this is actually pretty damn good because yeah you want to do your red quadrant to the sideline gank reset protect and gank as well but it's predictable like everyone knows if you go leashless you're probably doing raptors but what if you go leashless and you're doing this 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 and you're leashed in you gank the darius darius you get him ahead with a killer against the brolaf over here reset enemy jungles will have no idea what to do because they're so used to you doing the red quadrant all of a sudden you did the blue quadrant because you started wolves grump for good sequencing blue to finish <laughs> Base, got protection, can gank it first, full back, can gank it first, full back, a crab. There's so many things that can play out, right? Like, I need to probably make a main channel video expounding on this a little bit, but that's it, right? Use these mind games only. Now, Sivir will go back to base here after the gentle shove, and the Nika most likely is just going to be doing her blue and a grub. There's no way the Zac is down here because we saw him go up, so we could afford to do our Wolves Grump Blue, right? Out of base, Wolves Grump Blue. And then the scuttle, and now we'd be ready and primed to go do something else. Sivir actually just chills, and this is the problem. You know, getting an extra dagger or longsword in these lanes are, are huge. Oh look, Rel is rotating. At the end of the day, as Zack, <laughs> again, extra stuff here. This is a juicy game for a low elos explicitly. Really, really good. Bronze, silver, you want gold? This is the kind of shit I talk about all the time, but... Rarely do we get such a good example of early dynamic pathing from a low elo perspective. Because now you know she did boom, boom, boom as you press tab C or go back to base. So you know she's going to be down here. She has to be. There's nothing to do topside. If she doesn't show topside, again, then you take her blue and grump. And repeat gank bottom lane, which is better for everybody anyway. But because we know that she's down here. And you should start to learn when camps respawn. If she started Raptors, Red Crux, you know what you're going to have... A, at 3 minute 55, 3 minute 57 ish, probably in this yellow, respawn of the Raptors. Typically, if you go red, Krugs, Raptors, you're gonna have red, obviously not respawn for 5 minutes, but then the Krugs will respawn for 20, then these will respawn for 40 ish. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to always go to the Krugs at 420 to steal, and of course it's not even 420 now. So it makes a lot of sense to gank this, or just fall back to your Blissite Quadrant. But because she started Raptors, you know straight up that that sucker camp is available at 355, 356, 357. Go and take it, because you know she's down here. Then look to gank this lane, right on top of this, right? Like, right on top of this. Like, we actually look at him here, moving, takes this sucker, which is good. Okay, we know she's bottom side. Sivir backs off. My hotkeys aren't working. Riot games. Riot games. I, it happens so much. There we go. <laughs> it happens so much where things just do not work properly and everything gets reset. It's really horrible. Anyway, there we go. So now we look at this. If we had decided to go for this immediately, you know, there is a universe where you might be here to capitalize and help the, the Vega and be here for this counter gank right now. Maybe you get something, maybe you don't. You don't want a results based on possibility, but you don't know that this is going to happen when you're doing the Raptors. But when you see it happen, you're like, Daddy Zach can do something about that. And of course, as always, you don't want to do two camps, do a scuttle, do something, have to fall back to a singular camp. Even though here she can sequence nicely, this should be gone from the Zach's uh, own purple hands. But mechanics are so important, man. Like, you can make all the best plays every game, have the best decisions, have the best burgers, the best coffee, everything. But if you don't nail the amount of sugar and milk, if you don't hit the skill shots when you have to, you just got a shit cup of coffee and that, that no one enjoys that. No one enjoys that. No one has ever enjoys that. Enjoys that. Enjoyed that as Yasuo goes to the bottom lane, roaming level six and uh, giving a righteousness onto the Sivir and the Zerath. But the vein does die, so I guess it's worth it. Now, this guy's going down here. We saw the Nico going up here, so no cycle. She's also going to reset and come down to the bottom side again because she is sequencing bottom of the top. We would have tracked that as well. Zack is rotating around. Rel is still up. We're going to go in here, hit onto the Yasubi. Windwall is activated, clapping with the Qs. Burn. Burn of the bombies. Woo! There we go. Nico has shown up as well. What are the cooldowns here on Zachary? <laughs> yes. Yes. Keep your body. Ugh. Man, guys, the skill shots. Practice ARAMs. Go 2v2 Arena. Pick your champion and just play. Just play and get good at hitting skill shots. Uh, we do lose our passive, but we do kill the rel as well. Nice rotation from the Zerath. Good old fashioned. Oh my god. <laughs> this is su such an interesting. Uh, we'll have E up as well, so this should be a dead vein. Woohoo! Boink. Nicely done. 
So with 302, we're really, really fed, okay? Which is great, right? But, boiler alert. Zach loses this game. He does. He loses the game. How and why? Let's find out together as one on the coaching channel as we do another gank here. So, Nika comes out of base and says, fine, 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 fine. I'll take the top side quadrant. Can I look top lane? No, Olaf has done the business. All right, I should probably go for the Herald because I see that they killed my mid laner and go for this. Does she decide to go for the Herald? No. Should she have? Yes, she should have. Why? Because even though the Zac is going to keep camping my bottom lane here, you could still afford yourself to take it. And if you see or expect him to do this, you can still reset and counter gank it. You don't have to stay top side and take his camps and dive the top lane with the Herald. You can just take the Herald as the objective while he does a dragon, go back to base, and then you can match the Zac later. Because even though the Zac is going to come down here and do this gank, you know, if you take the Herald on base and you are in the same position, I'd rather be in that position than taking my Wolves and Grump for this, because my Wolves and Grump will be there afterwards, you know? And if I lose a Grump for a good play, I'm okay with that. Especially if you use uh, the Herald on the bottom side. So Zach will show up here as the bot lane goes all in again. As Zach, you're kind of annoyed about this, but that's on you for not recognizing the lane state, the wave state, the push state, and what your teammates are doing. You think you need to go around the long way. Sometimes you don't. You can just walk at them. He does get nothing, though. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. Minion. Mm-hmm. Is it going to work? Yeah, it's going to work, 100%. Because again, people don't press tab. Where's Anika? Where's Anika? Where's Anika? Press tab. Do we see her? We do, but where is she? Who where should be? Oh, she actually hit her root for once. It's nice when they hit an E for once, isn't it? <sighs> That's why it's a good champion for low elo, because you can get away with this kind of quadrant clearing, semi-full sequencing, easy ganks, because no one is trying... I mean, pro players aren't even tracking it, right? Okay, we have the Darius going mid lane. Vega still gets a kill back. The level 5 vein. Oh no, level 5. Just kidding, it's a level 6. Nico, let's see if we can do something here. A nice rotation with the Relic. And misses that root. Does hit the ult, of course, but he'll get the heal. Is it enough? Zach rotates over. Auto attack blue buff. Do we have anything left? No, we do not. He gets clapped. Cheeks. Not the clap. Nico is able to escape. Does hit that one there, which is nice, but Rel will die for this. <sighs> how many kills? How much experience? How much gold is lost in one of your games? Every game, because you just miss your skill shots. Your skill shots. Sean Connery. You just missed your skill shots. I mean, it's all very well saying, ah, damn, but like, you gotta hit him. You gotta get better at it. As I said, it's, it's so damn important. It's why you see Diamond 4 players who have the macro of a, a rotten lemon and the combined IQ of a sweet potato grown in the year 1864, but they can still get Diamond 4 because the mechanics are just really, really good. They play an edgelord champion and no one is able to actually deal with it because they keep missing theirs. Nice Q by the Yasuo goes straight back in, hits the Vega, and Nico's like, should I be a minion for this? You know, now she's chasing things around way too much, right? Like, now she's chasing things around way too much. Huh. Seven minions? Where's this minion going? Who gave him free will? It's... At some point, it's a little predictable. But yeah, I, I think we're leaving way too much CS on the map at this stage, rather than looking for a quadrant. Like, do a quadrant, go mid lane, K cut up, do this, counter jungle if he goes down, otherwise do your own quadrant here, can I gank this, and then do the quadrant. Always look for flow. You know, we talk about f full sequencing all the time. The term I have for this that I used... Uh, in the in the silver course, I believe was segmented sequencing, very briefly. Or I mentioned it in, in a session with someone after they they, they did that course because they're like, what do you call this? Quadrant clearing, yes, but as a whole concept, the holistic concept of hey, let me do a quadrant, look for a gank, look for a neutral, look for another gank, or a counter jungle, or fall back to my side, right? Like, boom, gankable, hmm, scuttle, okay. From scuttle, can I counter jungle? Hmm, maybe not. Can I gank this? Hmm, maybe. If nothing, okay, I can at least loop back here or loop back here and then lane gank, right? So you're creating this, this pseudo-sequencing, but it's not for camps, it's for every decision. Does that make sense? So that's the kind of stuff you want to look for in low elo, because you keep your CSPM high enough, but it also gives you the ability to have high KPM, which, as we all know, is fundamentally necessary for silver climbings. Now, we do take the Grump here. We're not level 8, so there's no real pressure. Again, we're going to become a minion, it seems. I would like to see... This character becomes something else. This is like the lamest Transformer of all time. Again, Vayne goes all the way in. Going all in on the Zerath here. Flames are burned. And Nico, <laughs> this one minion. <laughs> look, at this, look at this rebel minion by itself. <laughs> leaving everybody else. A total Leroy Jenkins minion. Here we go. Boink. Smacks itself a kill. So, I mean, it, it's working. It shouldn't work this many times, but it is working. And now we can do some counter jungling. Obviously, the Zach is on the top side here. Again, as soon as he sees this, should be on the Herald. Like, you still have the ability now to go Herald. 
because you got this guy pushing top lane you got this guy pushing this this should be dead already you know the dead uh, the olaf sorry is dead go top lane with vega v2 hit this juice down elevate this game state a little bit shove it up for one more charge take his krugs fall back to clear whatever you need to clear up go back to base and you'll be back here in time for this dragon eh, probably can't do your blue side camps but everything else you can do do whatever camps you can before having to go back to base to be in time for dragon right and now your bottom lane and their bottom lane sort of turrets up so you're going to be able to accomplish quite a lot there and he just isn't seeing that counter jungling and silver junglers just don't see it not not counter jungling counter objectives right guy shows bottom lane doing something else ten thousand years well i'll take the objective top side i'll do the counter jungling why are we leaving it and that's the biggest thing about silver and bronze get it through your heads if you can punish people's pathing mistakes and punish where they are because they haven't been segmented sequencing properly, you're going to get a lot of cool stuff. And that stuff is experience and gold. And uh, last I checked, all my homies love experience and gold. So we're going to do this top side quadrant here. It's 322. No one's taking the Herald. I guess no one gives a shit. Which is, oh, again, oh, it's it's like, like if, it's like if Iron Man bought the nano suit armor, but it didn't transform into anything other than the sword. It's like, can you transform into anything? Yeah. Why do you keep going to the sword? I don't know, comfort. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Now, Zack is on the top side here. Dragon is up. Herald is up. The, 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 the Scuttle Crab is up. There's just so much shit up, and they're focusing entirely on their own camps. Reward yourself with your camps as a stress. Uh, as a stressor. There. Oh, look, Olaf is here and there. How is this possibly? Uh, Zack does have his passive up, as we see by the Silver Wings on the beautiful health bar that he has. Vega rotates over here. We're going to try and burn this down. Olaf eventually goes CC a moon. Nico is here. We're going to get this snackery kill. I think this should be good. Yeah. Now we're going to focus on the Herald, which should have been killed anyway. But, uh, you know, taking something, you know, later is better than taking it never. Especially with Heralds because of push pressure. And we most likely want to bust open something somewhere in order to... I don't use it here. If she uses it here, I'm going to be enraged. What the fuck? Two Olafs again? It's a, the WTF two Shens meme from about a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a decade ago. Uh, Olaf does get a kill. Now, Nico, okay, while she floats here, sorry, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just staring at the map. While, thank you, my two Shens. While Nico, hey, bravo, yay, we hit the, we hit the root. How, how cool and fun. So now do we get an objective from it? So look at this. This game has been a little stale for a little bit with just randomness. What has changed this game? Don't ever go for this, by the way, if you're a silver jungler. Just F it. Take your camps. Take take your whole jungle. If you cannot go somewhere to counter jungle or do anything, just the map is terrible and miserable, just give up the dragon. Let them invest their time. And just get as much gold and experience as you can. Right? And then look for a pick play somewhere if you can or just use that as a timeout. Like, I messed up. I might as well just maximize this time period while I give them a dragon. Make myself as strong as possible for the next time we meet. Don't go for the steal and die. It's just absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. I don't know why anyone does this unless it's like a game-winning possibility, possibility. Possibility. There we go. Tongue-tied. And, you know, it's a soul point or something that allows your team to get the bearing because you're distracting them. You know, th those kind of things. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where you just don't want to do it for no particular reason, where you get nothing. And, again, to finish the point, I started while they were doing the dragon, not to be too Kylo Ren, it's where you notice the game ends up stagnant, running around, farming this a little bit, farming that a little bit, getting a pick here and there. No real, you know, meaning to what we're doing. And basically, what you see is, <laughs> look over the Nico. Basically, what you see is, as soon as the Nico gets a pick and a kill and translates it into a herald, then rotate somewhere else with someone else, and then and then and then they get more kills, and and then they go for another objective, and now someone else is out of position, and then they go for that the game starts going in their favor very, very easily. And the reason Zack is losing this despite being 7-2-2 is not because of his lane, it's not because of anything other than himself. He disappeared, man. Like, he was gone. We could have taken Herald and Counter Jungled and done those things I mentioned. He just didn't do any of it, right? And now he's done two levels to the Nika, who while she hasn't farmed incredibly, it's still been... Whoa. That was a clencher. It's still been better than the Zack, who's at 89, she's at 117. And we talk about the Nico doing a camp here, camp there, and then doing stuff, 
imagine if she was doing the quadrant, then doing stuff, looking for stuff, doing the quadrant, doing stuff, going back to base, doing the quadrant, or doing stuff and then falling back to the quadrant the whole time. She could be at 140 easy, right? At this particular stage. No, easy. This is pretty good, but you know what I mean. The Zack, on the other hand, is like, you're getting these kills, but where is the impact from kill conversion ratio? Where are you getting, right? As we see a pick on the top side here, should be, uh, I don't want to say free, but in theory, it should be free. Level 12, level 9, level 11. Obviously, he has the, the mega movement speed button. Okay, they, they pull out. You know, if you don't have kill conversion ratio, where you get kills, picks, and you take objectives, you take neutrals, you push in for counter jungle, and then you kill again, and then you push more turrets, you're just going to lose most games. Even if you're fed, and it doesn't really matter. Rel goes all in for the Giga Flash as Vayne is just melted. While the Nico's doing her cams, yeah, Nico's doing her cams, goodness gracious. Trying to speak and focus and looking just, I'm used to just looking for icons quickly. I don't always check in replays because replays I'm looking at the whole macro state all the time. And then I look at the minimap quickly, I just see an Olaf. Yeah, I, I don't know, it's just reflex. Anyway, very clearly this is a Nico again, two Olafs. This should just be titled the two Olafs juggle coaching. We're going to hold this wave here. Eh. You know, if you're going to lose a turret, and there's no ways you can actually go in super. Can we actually go in super? Whew. We can get one kill for sure. Okay, there we go. There we go. We could have done that anyway, though. What I'm getting at is, look, I'm doing Krugs. I see people die. They're getting this turret. I can't hold it. Why waste time? Just do the red. Do the raptors. Take two camps while they do a turret, and then make the same play. And now go boom, boom here. If no one takes this, you can push this out because there's no Baron just yet. Now you can recall by, go straight for this Baron contest. You've added in two camps, right? Instead, now she's falling back to these two camps. Now we'll go to this or not. And it just cover it's two camps she could have taken and she could be going on the way to Baron right now. If no one comes down here, she could be split pushing this with Olaf and your team gets caught out. So you just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. They'll send back two people. Do you see where I'm going with the runaway effect all the time? It's always about the runaway effect. And if you as a jungler, she's doing it, not as efficiently as she should, but she's doing it. And that's the most important thing in silver. We talk about this hyper-efficiency that I'm mentioning all the time. The Zack is not doing really anything that we're talking about, right? He just kind of shows up, gets some kills, and moves on with his life. The Nico actually is doing it just a little bit less efficiently. So the most important thing, for sure, is just to do it. <laughs> yes, let us die. You know, the most important thing is to do it. Because if you're doing it in silver, it's enough to climb, it's enough to get you to gold. If you can do it efficiently and consistently, you'll get to platinum with a lot of the, what I'm talking about here. 100%. Right? 100%. Once you add in the ex the very important facet of gold jungling, which is jungle denial. Which, as you can see, is not in a silver jungle's brain. So we didn't decide to rotate to this fight. Now we're going to... Okay, well, it doesn't matter when you have the Giga Flash of Doom. He does have passive. Can we burn it? Yes, we can. We have smite. No, we don't. Rel shows up. That should be free kill. Don't results base that. Don't results base that. Because... We sat here a long time watching this, thinking, I don't think we need to rotate. I don't think we need to rotate. Okay, I'll rotate. Could we have rotated first, save some people? Ugh. You gotta make that assessment. But at the same time, as long as you make the rotation, even if it's not 100% correct or on point, and you're able to get the kills into the objective, great for silver, right? That's it. Like, this is the kind of stuff I'm happy with. There's no flame here to this, Nico. This is solid jungling. Didn't tilt. Only two deaths. Zack has four deaths, two of them dumb. Actually, all of them probably dumb, right? Yeah, all of them were dumb. No, not enough farming and quadrant clearing, and the Nico has just pushed waves, pushed a few turrets, taken some objectives, and once he started taking objectives, the game opened up like an accordion, and uh, hopefully it didn't close because that noise would make me very upset. I, I don't know why. You know, like, sometimes accordions and bagpipes just have a, a screwdriver into your temple kind of sound? Does that make sense? Yeah. Of course it does. You guys all... You understand me. Because I don't understand me, so someone has to. So we, now we go to the Raptors. We could here, as we talk about a lot of the game, go Krugs into Raptors, into joining our team. But we see the Yasuo down here. We see the Vayne pushing. We see the Olaf drawing too. Here is where you want to ensure you are there for your team. But you want to ensure you're there for your team the right way. So are we strong enough to make this fight? And the answer was a resounding no. And you could see in my voice as I slowed down. Once the Vayne died, sorry. Oh dear, is this a Baron? This is a Baron. This is a Baron. Oh, okay. It's exactly what I'm talking about. So, you kind of want to be here for your team. That's why we don't do Krugs. 
That's why we go straight to Raptors instead. Okay, I'm going to the Raptors. Let's see what can we do here. Now, you should be pinging, watching, seeing. You're like, okay, well, that's another push. He's dead. Pull. It's out. It's done. You're, you're done. Because, yes, even though there's, there, there's this Olaf on the bottom side, he's low. No TP. You've got yourself, your sewer, plus Rel, but you don't have Rel in your pocket just yet, right? And so going in all in is great, but this guy just absolutely, like, you just died, right? We don't have, we did have a Zonius we could have used, but still, is this a fight you necessarily want to go for? Yeah, there's two people bot lane, 2v1, so you do have the 3v3, but again, are we able to win it? I'm okay taking the fights you aren't entirely sure you're going to win, 50-50s, because you got to learn. I'm a lot more cautious with this kind of stuff with my champion pool, just because I know, unless I'm super duper giga fed, and again, we have 10,800 gold, but Vega has 12,000. The Vega is fed, the Vega's a problem for my champion pool, so what I would do here is, as soon as I see the Vayne die, and we don't quite have the setup ready to go, I would take this, leave a ward here, go take this. Uh, if there's a plant here, maybe hit it. Let's have a look if there is. Hey, there is. Maybe we can push this wave out a little bit, then go the long way back, take the Krugs. We would see if they're doing this, and if you want to contest and outsmite and steal, okay, we could try. But again, I'm not too stressed about forcing it, you know what I mean? So th I think, again, it's the same thing as a Zac with a dragon, as this fight here. Learn when it's just okay to say, actually, I don't feel it. I'm leaving. I'm doing the calculations, and I don't think we can. So I'm going to go take whatever I can away from them. Like, I didn't say go back to Raptors and Krugs. So take Scuttle, leave a ward, take the Grump, hit the Plump, push away, fall back to your Krugs, and avoid the death by staring at the minimap and extrapolating where they're going to go. <laughs> Pain. Well then. Well, for blue team, not for our protagonist, Nico. Uh, now on the blue buff. So that does cost us a Baron. Excuse me, that's not Nico. There we go. However, as I said, in game, in game, it's not, you know, the biggest crime to try and make that play, especially if you feel like you're strong, right? I'm not saying that everyone's going to make the, the right move there, but in my mind, once I see a 12,000 gold, a hybrid Vagar, with my pool, like a Zyra or something like this, in a similar situation, and my Vayne dies, I'm out. Because Vayne's strong. This cut is dangerous, man. Like, you gotta watch this cut here. You gotta, you gotta go the long way. If you cut through here, Vega's just gonna kill you. Anyway, three in the bot lane, which means you've got the numbers advantage here. Can we do some kind of counter invade? Uh, counter engage. Three people bot lane to kill the Olaf is great, for, from our perspective. And now we should be going in. Like, now we should be going in. Absolutely. 3v2, obviously we don't have your sewages yet. But this is where we can maybe do something. Right, so let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. Come on, Vayne. Come on, Rel. Let's go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. There we go. We do hit it. We do have the uh, Zonius to be used, which we don't. She should have Zonius dead, and it works out perfectly. If she baits it in with a Zonius, there, we get it. Can we get this one as well? <laughs> Flash into the, into the swag. E to the face. There you go. That's a thumbnail, isn't it? Yeah. If only I made all roll content, I would put that in the thumbnail. So again, that's good. But what are they doing? They got a Baron. Like it's get a Baron, you're doing blue. Your whole team, you sent three people bot lane for no particular reason. You got two people mid lane. So if you kill the guy splitting and you have three, just push the three hard as hell so your two can dip down and join you. You can siege a little bit while you have numbers advantage. Like why are you going back to your camps and shit like this? Your gold resets don't matter in that case, right? Like I have. Um, 400 gold for a ruby crystal. I should go back to... No. Just push. You've got Baron. You're wasting it. And of course now it is. There we go. I'm getting a little bit more animated as we get into this. I think it makes sense why. Zach is going to do what Zach does against uh, two people by himself. Darius is going to rotate over here. We're going to make sure we kill that. It is a vein with the rel. He do hit the double slap clap into the bonky bonkies. Deaths get condemned. Doesn't have... <laughs> just when Vega just shows up with the most unskilled button press, man... Uh... That champion. That champion. See, kite this up, kite this up, kite this up, kite this up. You don't want to be caught here at all. We missed it. We're going for it. Zach's there. Vega's there. Zareth is there. We're going to go in on this. We're going to get this kill. Maybe we actually finally use our Zonias, but we are 99% going to be <gasps> dead. And now Olaf is running around. Yosu is running around. So, hey. When the bottom laners do this, and you're like, what do I do when my bottom laners do this? Well, first and foremost, you died when you shouldn't have. So if your bottom lane are over pushing like this, can we shadow? Can we counter fight it? Can we just straight up win it? Do we rotate to another lane and shove this out as well? Yes, 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 yes. You play off of their idiocy. 
your goal is to, to win the game, you can't go to Krugs or Dyer necessarily while they have a push, because they're going to always have a push. How can we use the over push to our advantage? That's the ultimate question. Goes to the dragon. We obviously have here the Vega, a little bit out of position. Olaf is like, yes, yes, he's walking to the wall because he wants to flash it. Zareth is ulting here as well. Uh, what happened while I was chatting about that? Sorry. Tangen tangents again. Tangents again. Uh, Vayne's here, okay. Vega's here trying to make this a trap. Does a lot of damage to the Rel. You saw <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's what happened. And now he flashes. Okay, there we go. Rel's pushed out as well. Zareth keeps doing a lot of stuff. Olaf's just, I'm going to keep chasing the Vega, get that kill. Again, the Zareth, the, the Zack and the Sivir are living in their own universe. Instead of helping in any capacity, they just stay on the dragon, stay on the dragon, stay on the dragon. Now Olaf is going to use his Ravenous Hydra plus built-in lifesteal to keep going. Probably die anyway. There we go. Z Nico in the mid lane goes and kills the Zareth. So now you're looking at exactly the kind of stuff I hate. Which is just random kills and pushes. and <laughs> There's real no... There's really no... Cohesive kind of flow to the game, is there? Okay. Now we move to the dragon. Zach's taking so long to do it, so we're gonna go ahead and try and do it. He's probably gonna. Does he E over the. You can E diagonally? Like, not. You can E across and smite mid air. Why doesn't he just do that? Bane's not chasing him. Okay. He does steal it this time. He has his flash up. Vayne's gonna chase him now. Uh, we know people are dead. Vayne should be careful. Okay. See? That's an okay time to steal. Why? Because it's a dragon, our whole team's dead, I can do absolutely nothing else. If I get it and flash out, because I know I can go in and get out, that's cool. If you're going in to die, it's not cool if a Baron, for example, is respawning. Here, they're not going to lose too much, but it is late enough in the game that I wouldn't want to die. So I would only go for it if I have the ability to get out. And he had his, his flash up, so... That's good, that's nice, we take those. Right, nearing the end of this one, become the minion, go all in. Oh, there we go, that was... So we watched it in real time, excuse me. I wasn't sure that was going to happen. She actually did it. Out of vision. Out of vision. Becomes a minion. No respect from the Vega. Steps up. Sivir as well. Gets a double knock up here. Uses that movement speed. Uses the Zonias as well to try and get the kill in the Vega. Probably you will die for this, but that's a dead Vega. Uh, well, not dead Vega, but he's, he's really low. And the fact that he's really low is huge. So we didn't get the kill, but we killed the Sivir. We have a super low Vega. All we need is one good flank and axe by the, the Olaf. And there is no flash on the Vega from before. That's why it's a good play. That's why I was saying that. And now we can chase down with the rest of the team. So in this case, as the Nico, it's like the supportive mage... Um, it's like the supportive mage play. She's tunnel visioning on the, the, the Darius quite a bit instead of just killing the, the Zac. Typical ADC things. Kill the shit in front of you. Kill the shit in front of you. Kill the shit in front of you. Always first. He would be dead now. There's passive Zack. Go into the next thing. Avoid the Zareth. Kill the Zack passive, please. Oi, yay, 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 oi, yay, 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 yay. There we go. There we go. Finally. So, if you're a, a Nico, a Fiddle, a Zyra, and you make this kind of play here on two critical targets, huge ults, kill one, use Zonyas, bait other ults from the Zareth, and you force a figure out with no flash and no HP, and your team can easily play off that, huge W play. Huge. They can go do this. Good play. Nice. All right. All we need to do here is reset everyone together. Spend your gold. Buy your pots. You don't need to control it at this particular point. I would go back and sell this. What do we have? Yeah. 875. You, you, can, go, you can go and sell it and buy... Um, well, not much, actually. Yeah. Not much. I guess you could buy Blasting One, Amp Tome, Needless, whatever component you think you can get at this stage with your gold, do it. Because you're going to go end now. Plus an Elixir, right? So like an Amp Tome plus an Elixir or... Get a blinding jewel, things like this. Um, what? Just go death cap. Like the HP is great, but just go death cap. Like, oh, okay. like you just one shot the Vega and the Civil with death cap. You understand what I'm saying? Like you just absolutely rinsed them with death cap. Like completely destroyed them. Games over already, and you live. Now, fortunately, our team is... That was it, man. That was what we're looking for. Let's watch that again. Oh, I want to watch that again. I'm sorry. Like, we just have to. Nicely done. But that's exactly what we're building towards here. And the Merlin Omicron is going to do absolutely piss shit nothing against anything. Like, you're not hitting the Zack. You know, you're killing the... You're killing 
the Sivir and the Vagar. That's your goal. So just maximize that AP damage. Oh, here we go. Not the Sivir, excuse me, on the Xerath, but they're both already exploded. The Zac has no passive up again. We're turning and hitting him. He's dead. Nothing is wasted on the Vagar. Nothing is wasted on the Xerath. We kill the Zac. Now we can turn back in. Sivir's like, I better run into them and die. Darius is like, I can do it. And then he can't. Nice job, Nico. Two Giga engages to win this game. But it all stemmed from decent farming, kill conversion ratio, while the Zac just didn't use the, the lead he had, even though he had a solid early. And hopefully you can see that. Nice total silver bronze game for getting gold as we head to the end of split one. Definitely, I, I enjoyed this one. This was a good one. A lot of good teachable moments, I feel. If you want more, jungle courses will have them available through memberships linked below. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.